and I hope she's in the room. I know our moderators are getting her checked in. She is the founder and owner of an international education company where she teaches how to successfully trade the stock market. The Stock <laughs> Swoosh is the name of her company. And it's based on one strategy called Golden Gaps. She's got a method that she created that's unique to the Stock Swish called Golden Gaps, which pinpoints institutional money in the stock market. So we're excited to have Melissa here today. She's been with us in the past and we really enjoyed her presentation before. She had a lot of great information to share. Today, she's going to talk about making a living in just 30 minutes a day, why the market open is the best time to trade, her favorite index for gauging market direction and finding high probability gap trades on selective stocks. So we're very excited to have her here today. Do we have Melissa and then ready to go? Absolutely. I see her there. Good morning, Melissa. Oh, I think we just need to get her unmuted. And there we go. Can you hear me? We oh, hear we you? hear you loud and clear, Melissa. Okay. Thank you for coming back. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. I'm going to attempt to share my screen here. Let's see if this works. I have a chart up. Can you see it? Absolutely. Yep. Looks beautiful. Okay. I'm not, welcome. Yeah. I thought I'd talk back and forth between my charts, and my PowerPoint. So I just wanted to pull the chart up first since we're talked about the market. What indices do I like to look at first? I thought I'd talk about this and then I'll go over to my slides. Uh, for those of you that traded yesterday, there was a massive sell-off that happened when Trump tweeted yesterday um, in the market. It was late in the afternoon, and I just wanted to look at this bar. It was around, this is a 245 bar here, 15-minute bar in the SPY. The one that I like to watch is the SPY. Why? Because you have more stocks in that bucket. The SPY is the ETF for the S&P. And you have the financials, which I think it's very important. You're not going to have a market making brand new all-time highs without the financials. So I'm actually, for the, for the short-term period here, thinking that the market is going to trade sideways or continue to sell off. And, and it's interesting because on Monday, I was on CBS and I said, we were rallying Monday. We rallied Monday, Trump got out of the hospital, and I said, I think that this rally isn't going to go anywhere. And then we sold off like a banshee yesterday. So I don't think we're going to go anywhere today in a, in a rally either because we're, we're too far away from the highs to get up there before the election and there's not enough time, 27 days, 26 days left um, until the election period. And I think that the market is not going to make that move until after we find out uh, who wins come November. So I like to watch the SPY because you have more stocks in the bucket than you do in the queues and also the Dow, which only has 30 stocks, and also you have the financials. And my read on the financials, let me just quickly look at JPM. JPM has earnings out on Tuesday morning. Earning season starts next week. You can see even here today how this is trading. This gapped up with the market too, rallying, couldn't go, to, go anywhere, starting to break down here. And if you look at the overall daily chart here of this, it, it just doesn't look that great. I mean, this is so far, so far from the highs that even if this ends up uh, having a bullish move next week on Tuesday, it's not going to get back up to the highs. So, um, you know, I watch the SPY. That's my favorite indice to watch. That's how I read everything. How I read everything also is in the gap which we'll talk about in the in the slides. Now, let me just see if I can pull my slides up here. And then I don't know if if there's questions as we go along, Raleigh, or forget how you do that here at the end. It's really depending on how you're most comfortable. I can feel the questions and feed them to you if you ask me, or you can handle it at the end. It's it's whatever you're most comfortable with, Melissa. Yeah, if you want to, if you, somebody has a question where we're going along, you can just you can just interrupt me and I'll, and I'll answer it. Anyways, today, that sounds good. Yeah. Today I'm going to talk about how you can earn a living trading from home, and I think this is important for 2020. Why? Because a lot of people want to work from home right now. People are still out there scared about the virus. Uh, they're still scared of getting the virus. Until we have a vaccine, until we have some therapeutics uh, that can cure uh, most people, I think people would prefer to work from home. Some people are working from home and are scheduled to go back early 2021, but that may be pushed off as well. So if you can work from home and earn a good substantial uh, income, I think that's the best case scenario right now, no matter, no matter what your age group and no matter what city you're in. Now, of course, I'm in New York. Uh, and New York has been devastated by COVID. Um, so I was very thankful that I already was working home from home pre-COVID and that I didn't have to go out 
um, during this time because it's it's just been a crazy, crazy year. But it has been a good year to trade the stock market because we've had a lot of volatility like yesterday. That kind of move is the kind of move that you want to capture in what I do in gaps. And we, we did capture that move. Actually, uh, we were in puts before that sell-off happened. And it happened so quick, so fast that if you weren't already short, you didn't capture the move for profit. So when I'm trading, I'm looking for momentum, which is a big move. Big moves can happen up, big moves can happen down. Um, today I'm gonna talk more about shorts and more about the short side because that's what many of the trades we've been doing here in the, recently in the last few weeks. Uh, if you'd like to contact her, me after the webinar, you can email me at melissaatthestockswish.com and you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, or Skype. So let's just get right down to the nuts and bolts of it. Lots and lots of people want to make money in the market, but a lot of people do not know how, and they think that they can figure it out by watching free videos or even coming to a, a webinar like today. While I'm gonna talk to you here for about an hour today, I can tell you right now, you're not gonna learn my system in this, in this lecture. This is a preview. This is a, this is a little bit uh, an eye-opening about what I do. And again, I'm gonna flip back and forth with the charts to show you as we go along here just so you can get an idea if you think what I do makes any sense. Because if you think it's something of interest and it makes sense and you can reach out to me and learn from me in a class, no one is gonna teach you how to trade in an hour. No one is gonna teach you how to trade in a free lecture. Anything that's worth good information is worth paying for. People pay me for my expertise. Like for example, being able to call the sell off yesterday before Trump tweeted. In fact, one of my students emailed me, did I, did I talk to Trump before, before I called the puts? No, I did not. I read what happened in the gap, and that's what I do. What is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. Movement happens during those periods. Stocks and people move up and move down. They buy, they sell stocks in the post-market and the pre-market. Tomorrow, there are uh, more unemployment claims numbers coming out. I guarantee you the market will gap tomorrow. I don't know if it gaps up. I don't know if it gaps down, but it will gap. So it's buying or selling that comes in in the after hours. And that is very, 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 very important time to be analyzing and looking at. And that's what I do. So I prepare in the morning before I trade what I'm going to trade way before the open. Many, many day traders don't decide what they're going to do until 10 o'clock, 1030. They scan and look and see what direction the market's headed. Right now we're green today, but I would not be going long anything. Even though the market's green today, the market feels very heavy, very heavy to me today. So getting back to the slide here, people can make money in the market, but the, the thing is that people don't take it seriously enough with a level of commitment to really learn it and understand before the big money comes, okay? So for every winner in the market, there's a loser. And there's never anybody that actually makes anything, okay? So for example, there were losers yesterday that were long in the market. The winners were, were me and my students that were short. We were down before we made the money, but I had the call. So there's always a winner and there's always a loser. Nobody's making anything or creating anything. It almost seems like sometimes the money comes out of thin air when we make money in a train because you really aren't making anything. But the caveat is that in order to make money trading, you must risk your own money in order to make it. And because you work so hard for your money at whatever your job is or whatever savings you have to open your trading account, you must take it very seriously. And I don't care if you're risking $200 or $2,000 a trade. I don't care if you're new at this or you've been doing this a long time. You still have to take it seriously. And you still have to be really, really good at what you do, which means what? You have to have more winners than losers. If you have too many losers, then it, there's no point in doing this because the, the end game is to win. That does not mean that every trade that I personally take wins. Some trades that I take lose, okay? But more win than lose. And that's where you need to be if you're gonna do it for a living, okay? And that being said, as far as the, the time period, whether you wanna trade options or whether you wanna do the fast day trades, we're gonna talk about both today. That is up to you and your schedule as far as your time commitment because the market's open from 9.30 to four. The US stock market, that's all that I train. So you can spend all day trading if you want, or you could be in and out quick in the morning if you want to. Like we did Apple yesterday. It was a fast trade, but it had a larger move in the afternoon where you could have held it down a little bit longer if you wanted to stay with it. Uh, anyways, getting back to what I was saying, you have to be honest with yourself about what you're doing. Many times I talk to people 
over and over and over the years. I've had the sock swish now for, you know, 10 years or so. People just get into this thing where they're losing. Then their attitude turns complete and 100% negative. They keep trading. They keep losing. Their attitude's bad. They don't know what to do. They're in desperation mode. And then they do crazy trades they shouldn't do. Once you get over the fact that every person when they start out loses at the beginning, you'll be a lot better off. You're never, you can't chase the losses that you've had in the past from things that you've done. You have to kind of take one step forward and say, listen, I'm moving up and I'm gonna start new today and I'm gonna have a new attitude about what I'm doing with this because the only way to be successful as a trader is to have a good attitude. You can't have a losing attitude and make money doing this. It's, it's far too difficult over the long haul to think like that. Like, again, this read that I've had of this market was a really, really professional read because the market rallied Monday. To see that sell-off would come in and we wouldn't follow through was a very professional read of the market. And, you know, there, that was what I would say would be a difficult day for people that were long because they say, well, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense. We should have rallied. Trump got out of the hospital. Da, 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 da. The fact is you have to read what the price is telling you. Sometimes it doesn't match up. Sometimes you have good news and the market falls. Sometimes you have bad news and the market rallies. It doesn't always match up one to one. You could have great earnings in a stock and then it could fall. JPM's out Tuesday morning, I said. It's reporting Tuesday morning. The earnings could be fabulous and the stock could fall or vice versa. So uh, you can't make decisions based on what you think is common sense, whether it's good or bad, to make decisions. Okay, so you have to learn a strategy to be consistent and you have to let go of all the things that have happened to you in the past, bad strategies, mistakes you made, losses that you have, and move forward with a good attitude because there's so much money in the market. Even now, this year, 2020, with the invention of like Schwab has this thing now, you can buy partial shares, this Robin Hood's out there. I mean, there's so many people trading now, lots of volume. And, you know, people are trading with a little bit of money, people are trading with a lot of money. Either way, that all the people that are in the market means opportunity for you if you know what to do and get the timing right and get the direction right. You will never make money in the market if you're not in the right direction. You've got to be in the right direction far more than you're in the wrong direction, okay? And so with the invention of these, of these types of trading accounts like Robinhood, like I said, it's just brought tremendous volume into the market, which is good because, I hate to say it, but it means there's more money out there for you to take when you're winning and there's gonna be more losers. And that's the cold, hard truth of it. So if you were been a loser in the past, step back, say, I'm gonna move forward. I'm not gonna be a loser anymore. I'm gonna take this seriously. I'm gonna become successful at this. I'm gonna learn what to do. And again, I'm gonna get a, a professional expertise from someone that knows what they're doing, which is me. Um, anyways, getting over what I was saying here about learning there are obstacles sometimes to learning how to do it. For example, sometimes people that have traded a long time, they come to me, they have to unlearn. They have to unlearn certain habits or things that they did in the past that do not work because what I do is very unique. Sometimes when people come to me, they're brand new, they're, they're better off because they don't have any bad habits. Now, that being said, people that are experienced know how to press the button. Uh, they understand the, how quick the market can move. So those things can be positive where you have an understanding of what to do uh, construction-wise and setting up an account and all of those things. But either way, everyone has different hurdles and obstacles that they have to get through. Some of that is learning. And again, it's skill. It's a skill set. When, you, when you're coming and you're learning from me, what are you learning? You're learning the knowledge, the information that I, that I have that's inside of me and my brain. You're learning the skills from me. When you grasp the skills and the concepts of how to understand how to read a chart, price action and a gap, you can apply those skills for your own use, for your own ability to be able to make money and profit in the market. And, and again, as I've been saying, you've got to take it seriously. And it's really not impossible. I mean, this has been a huge year here where there's people with me making more money than they've ever made before, simply because, again, of the way that the market's been trading and the volatility that we've seen. So, you know, learn from some of those experience. You know, today I'm talking. And again, you would pay me for my expertise in a class if you came to me. Now, let's talk about focus. Every day when I get up in the morning, I have a process that I go through. I only do gaps. First, I look at the pre-market in the market. Like I said, I focus on the SPY first. 
Then I look at any stocks that are gapping down. Then I go look at the bullish stocks, stocks that are gapping up after I look at the bearish ones. Why? Because I prefer to short over going long. Now, that doesn't mean you can't make money going long, and sometimes I do. Uh, but the reason that I like prefer to short is because selling happens very, very quickly. Why? Selling happens when panic comes in. In fact, I'm gonna go back to the chart really quickly here just to show you and pull up Boeing. Oh, look at this here. Beautiful. Look at this JPM falling. Uh, Boeing yesterday, and this is before Trump tweeted. Actually, no, let me go to a one minute. It was 11 o'clock. Uh, this is Boeing. This was yesterday, 10.5. Again, this is before the market fell off. This fell off. So here, 11.12, 11.13, 11.14, 11.15, 11.16, 11.17, 11.18, 11.19. .11 so this is seven minutes. So in seven minutes, high the bar up here was 174, and the low of the bar here within seven minutes, 165.85. The stock dropped almost $10 in seven minutes. And that, my friends, is momentum, volume, how you make money. If you were short this, which we were before it happened, you would have made money. So the beautiful thing here is with selling and why I like to short, we short selling, selling action. Again, you can do it as a put, you can do it as an equity trade, is because it happens quick. It happens out of nowhere. There were people along the stock that got stopped out. There were people along the stock that saw the sell off and then exited, but exited late. There were people in here that came up and tried to scoop it up here and to support and buy it. And then it fell further. And that was later in the afternoon after the market fell and after Trump tweeted. But anyways, this fell first. This fell first. And what I wanted to show you here with the idea of shorting is that I prefer to short because selling happens fast because it's panic. No one's really panicking to buy this market. You will have plenty of time to go along the spy, to go along Apple, to go along Google, Amazon, even the things you love. You have plenty of time to go long if you want. If you're, if you're not in anything, if you're flat, you have plenty of time to go long. You can go long wherever you want. You're not gonna miss it. But if you're already long and something drops and you're up and then you're down, or you're up and then you're not up as much and then you're, it's going down, 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 you see how where you panic. Now panic buying sometimes can happen. This is really, really rare. I'll just show you this really quickly. This was, gosh, it feels like forever ago, but this was Tesla. This, we did these two, we did calls in this because um, this is very expensive. Actually, at the time we did it, the stock was before the split. This was a couple of different times in here we did it. This was more like panic buying in here. This was like the summer. So you, you did have like, which is so rare. Like this is the only stock right now off the top of my head I can think that we were in that we did it that was like this. This was panic buying. Where it's like, oh my gosh, I gotta get it, I gotta get it. Hurry, hurry, hurry. And again, these numbers are wrong because the stock split here. This is when it, it blooped up over a thousand or whatever. Anyways, the point is that this was panic. Panic buying, which is so rare, you almost never ever see it. But this is an example of a chart with panic buying. But panic is great to train off of, and you mostly get it, mostly get it to the downside. All right, let me go back over here now where I was. Okay. All right, so what do I focus on? I focus on gaps. Okay, I focus on only my system, and I'm looking at my system as a way to predict the probability. So it's, I call it high probability, low probability. I also don't need the market necessarily on my side to get the trade. If I have the market on my side, which yesterday in the shorts you did, it helps it, helps it go to a bigger target, but I don't necessarily need it on my side. Um, hey, Melissa, ahead, just, yeah. uh, I just want to jump in, jump in a quick question here, because this came up as you were talking about panic buying and panic selling. And the question was, do you have a sense of how many people in the markets are retail traders versus institutional versus high frequency traders that may be contributing to that panic? Well, I'll tell you right now, my system and the criteria I look at in the morning is based on institutional buying and institutional selling. One of the reasons why I have a short-term bearish bias on this market, not that the market's not in an uptrend, the market isn't an uptrend, okay? It is, it's strong, that's why we haven't tanked yet. But I can see that and I see it in the gap. So that's, that's, what, that's the meat and potatoes of what I do. Again, you're not gonna learn that in this hour, but yes, I can see that. One of the things though that I'll tell you is that um, gosh, what was that one? Oh, Tesla. Hold on. Was it Tesla? No, Facebook. Here, this is right off the top of my head here, just to show you another example how I can tell 
This was back, back, way back the summer. This gapped up. This gapped up Facebook and earnings. It went boom, boom, boom. Retail traders were shorting this to fill the gap. It's the wrong thing to do. It doesn't consistently work to make money. That is not what I do at all. It's wrong. Retail traders were short this. We were long. We were long. We were down, 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 down. We were in calls and then it went poof. And it ran all the way up like a banshee and a fabulous long. So this was institutional money buying the stock and retail traders were short it. But they couldn't move it. It couldn't go anywhere. It didn't go anywhere at all. And it never filled the gap. So just a quick example here in a chart. Yes, I can tell that. I can tell that by my gap rating. Here's the just a quick example to show you in a chart by that. But what you want to be with is the side of the institutional money. You do not want to be with the side of, uh, of retail traders. But it's not that retail traders don't have any don't have any uh, power. They don't have they don't have the same power as institutional money does. And they never, never will, no matter how many Robinhood traders are in the market. But they can do something that seems like a temporary shift in power. Why? Because the institutions aren't doing anything. Like start, say for example, say say someday I start a hedge fund. Say I ran one right now. I wouldn't be buying this market. I already told you that. So I wouldn't be buying here. Maybe I'm not selling. Maybe I'm not selling anything today. Maybe I'm not selling any more positions here. I sold at the beginning of September. Maybe I'm not selling up, but I'm also not buying. So you're not going to get the pull through. Do you understand what I'm saying? So there's just a quick quick explanation of that. I don't know if there's another question before I go on, onto the chart again. No, no, that's good because once again, you know, people tend to think it's the retail trailers, the, the traders that create the panic in the market, whether it's up or down. And so the question was, of all the participants, what percentage really is retail traders versus high frequency traders that might be having algorithms that are firing off well, and things of that yeah, nature? Yeah, you have all of it. You have all of it in the market, but the people of the power are the same people that always have the power, the people with the money. That's Absolutely. banks. That's big professional traders, that's hedge funds. And don't forget, there's lots of different uh, levels of hedge funds. You can start a hedge fund, I think, with like $250,000. I mean, you don't have to have, you know, 100 million to open up a fund or whatever the case may be. There's many different le levels of funds as well. So, I mean, there's, there's so many things that are going on in the market at one point, and that's what makes it tricky. Don't you understand? This is why, this is why you have to know what you're doing. <laughs> Because you have to be able to hold it through. Like I was saying, we were short stocks and had short positions that were down. People had to hold them through, but they were options. When you do an option, it's a fixed risk, meaning you can't lose any more than you have at risk. If you pay a dollar for the contract, that's all you can lose. So you put the position on. And when I day trade, I have a stop in. So I have a stop in too. I don't have an unlimited risk, okay? But everyone has to have a set amount of risk that they use with the trade, but you've got to let the trade play out. You can't take it, kill it, take it, kill it, go long, go short, the same thing the same day. That's crazy. And yet people do it. People do it and they wonder why they get depressed and lose money and are down about it. If you're acting like a crazy person, then your results will reflect that. And, and if you're acting like a loser, your results will reflect that as well. What do I mean by that? I mean in your attitude about what you're doing, feeling like everything's against you and everyone's against you in the market. If it bothers you watching the news and going onto Twitter and all these things that can get in your head, don't do it. Just don't do it. Focus on the chart. Again, I saw what happened today live on my charts before I even had the news on. I said, oh, something must have happened there. And then I saw it later when I turned on the news to see what it was. But you know, you have to read the price action and focus on that. What I do is advanced technical analysis. It's reading chart, chart action. Sometimes the things do line up. Sometimes they don't. When they line up, it's great, but sometimes they don't. So you always have to lean with the technicals, which is reading the price, reading who's buying, reading who's selling. And that big sell-off that happened, that did happen yesterday, is because, again, you had retail traders that were long, and they did get stopped out. And then you also had other things triggered. But that, that again, is something that I foresaw, so we didn't go long anything. So you either wait, wait for the setup, you know, or do nothing if you don't understand what to do. And that's that's the best case scenario. Anyways, how can you become successful day trading? The number one key ingredient to becoming successful as a day trader is having a specific system, which I do, and a strategy, which is gaps. And that can offer you a consistent, reliable way to profit, okay? Trading success and financial success in the market is by pure design. You have to set your point, say, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it until I understand what I'm doing. And once you understand it, 
And once you have the skills, then the money comes. And sometimes the money can come very quickly. I've had people take the class and make a lot of money right after the class and they didn't know what they were doing before. It doesn't have to take forever, but it does take a full understanding of what to do. And for me personally, I have found that the niche for me is really the gaps because that's how I've read the market very well. Many, many people, even people that I'm on, on television with, they look at different things. They're looking at support. They're looking at resistance. They're looking at the moving averages. They're looking at, again, the, the fundamentals. So they're looking at other things. For me, the niche is the gap. And one thing I'll say, you know, whether I've been doing webinars with Raleigh for a while now, whether it's five years from now, if I'm still even doing this five years from now, or 10 years from now, or five years ago, I'll always have a niche with this because people just don't get it when it comes to gaps. They just don't understand them. They think they're too complex. They, they, it, they just can't grasp the, their head around it. The idea of the gap fill is something that people can wrap their head around. It doesn't work. So, and even if it sometimes works over the long haul, it doesn't consistently work to make money, which is you can't do it. You can't do something that doesn't work all the time because, or, or most of the time, I should say, still some trades are gonna lose. But for example, buying support, which people look at, which you had going on in the last week, you know, and then it broke, broke yesterday. It, it doesn't work consistently because for every three trades you take that make money, you'll have four that lose. So then how are you ahead? I mean, how, how are you ahead? Again, uh, brokers aren't doing commissions right now in 2020, that's something that's changed, but you still have other costs involved with trading. Your winners have to pull you ahead to make money, not just cover the losses, but whatever other costs that you'd have. Anyways, for me, it's the gaps. That's what's unique, that's what's a niche, and I am reading institutional money in the gap. That, for me, is what I play off of. It moves stocks and it moves gaps. And even if you think it's not there, it is. Um, people are confused about reading gap direction. I think it also is, is like I said, it's something that is a skill-based thing and, and people just don't want to take the time to learn it. It's much more easier to look at two crisscrossing moving averages like the eight and the 20 and say, oh, it's a long, let's go long here. For people, they can, they can do that. But I mean, if that was that easy to trade, then every single person would make money in the market. And guess what? Then, then there wouldn't be a market. The very essence and the setup of the way the market is, is that the people in charge win more than they don't. Just like the banking system. We were talking about this other day because I, I noticed recently, I'll just say this really quickly. Uh, banks right now are, are really, really pushing to, they don't, want, they don't want deposits right now as much as before to pay for them, meaning they'll take deposits, but they don't want to pay high interest rates for them. Banks are, are right now skewed towards trying to get lower balances and paying higher interest rates. And that to me is a precursor for the possibility of having negative interest rates, which would be really bad for the economy. Also, Fannie and Freddie, and this hasn't come out yet, starting December 1st, are raising the interest rates and refinances. If you want to refinance, I'd run out and do it today because you're going to pay more starting December 1st, and banks have already increased their rate. People that control the market, people that control the world are the banks and the people with money. And until you wrap your head around that, you're not going to do good with the system. It doesn't mean that you can't be part of that tiny, tiny little percentage of people are successful, but you got to wrap your head around what it is. Okay, and you have to learn to see what they're doing so you can trade with them. It's so easy to make money if you're with those people because they control the market. They control what's happening. And again, we were talking about this before because I was like, I don't know if we ever should have bailed out the banks when we did that years and years ago because we really, some banks didn't need it, some banks didn't, but some didn't. And we made the ones that didn't need it even stronger, even stronger, okay? So in this time and day and age when there's many people unemployed, a lot of people in unemployment, or people are just feeling uncertain about the future, you have to take it upon yourself to be in charge of your own finances. Feeling like a victim to your circumstances or your trading, and again, feeling like a loser isn't going to get you anywhere. You can, you can get some sympathy from people. You can talk to your trader friends. Oh, we lost today. This sucks. They're against us. That isn't going to do anything for you. It's not going to get you ahead. And if you don't have the right attitude, the attitude like the wealthy people, okay, like the people that control the market, that are in control, that are making the choices and making the decisions, you can be in control. In your little tiny world, if you have a $25,000 account or a $5,000 account or hundred grand in an account, you can be the ruler and the person in control of your world. Don't think that you can't. You can. You can choose to win or you can choose to lose. It really, really is up to you. You can also choose not to trade, okay? which some days that is the case. And you can choose to take off. 
You can choose to take a day off and give yourself a vacation when you work for yourself too. You can do what you want, okay? With, with certain calculated risk. Now, this was a play we did here. I'm just gonna basically go over here. This is a daily chart of Mew. We did this, this was earnings. It was back at the end of September. Mew gap down. Now, again, what is a, what is a gap? Stock closed here, gap down. Closed at one price up here the night before, boom. Up and in the morning, down. So the stock closed up here around 50 and change, whatever the exact number was. And then it opened in the morning here right around 49. We shorted this. This was a short, okay? So this happened from here to here. So the market closed at 4. This is 9.30 a.m. So from here to here went boom. And we got the short in this. Actually, it was 9.30. Uh, this isn't 9.3. It's 9.30. Sorry. Anyways, entry was 48.92. Stock was 49.55. Shares was 5,000. Risk was 31.50. Exit was 48.10. I do call the trades live in the room. I call the entry and the stop and the exit and the targets. Profit was 4,100. Now, this is an advanced risk, but say, for example, if you took half this size, still a fabulous trade. You could have made over two grand. And again, how do you do it? I rank the gap in the morning, pre-market, say, I like me as a short. I don't take it till it sets up. I wait to the open, wait to the setup. And if it sets up, then I do it. Sometimes they don't set up, then I don't do it. But in this case here, it did set up, it did fall, and actually it fell even further. This was one where <coughs> I was looking for 48, but it actually broke that and went all the way down almost to 47, you can see in that tail. Now, I prefer to trade the morning and be done very, very quickly most days. Um, like yesterday, I got, a, I got out of that apple way before it went all the way down to 112 and change. But, but you can hold things longer. And this was one, too, that, that kept going on that particular day. Oh, here's a bigger chart. Here's a bigger chart of it here. Um, yeah, so here, here, here actually was the full-on bar. That was, that was during the day on that day. So here's where it closed. Here's where it opened. We shorted it in here. We got out right around here, snug as a bug. And then it kept going. Yeah, there it is. So this is where it closed on that day. Yeah, that was a, that was a good move. That was September 30th. So that is a gap. This is a gap down. Okay, what's a gap up? This was a gap up. Stock closed here, gapped up. I don't remember the reason for this. This was back mid-September. We did not do this here, but I'm just showing a bullish gap. Stock closed here at 46, opened in the morning up here over 48, rallied, ran up here almost to 50, got over 49. So like here, you could have gone long. Now again, I did not do this. I don't even know if it would have rated well, but this is one that might have rated well, um, and you could have certainly gone long it. Okay. Now let's talk about options here. So I have an options newsletter. How does that work? I email the trade out when I see it. Sometimes it's in the pre-market, sometimes it's on the day. So Wednesday, September 23rd, this was the middle of the afternoon, I called SPY puts. I called the 327 SPY puts. So let's go to the daily chart here on the 23rd. Oh shoot, I don't have it in here, do I? Oh no, here I do, I do. The 23rd here. So this sold off. So I called the 327s, we were above it, ran into the strike, threw it, down, 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 boom. And then actually felt the secondary day in here, came down, broke 320. So let me go back to this. This was a good price for this, okay? This was 240 for one contract. Actually down here, 240 for 10 would have been $2,400. This is an intermediate trader risk, not advanced. Sold at 560, nice profit. 3,200 risking 2,400. Return investment is 133. So that's within 24 hours. Boom, boom. Then if you wished more, an advanced trader, 7,200, profit 9,600. Again, just more contracts. You can't lose more than the number that you take of the cost of the contract. You also do not need margin in order to have an options account. Now, if you want to be in, out, in, out, in, out in options, like day trades, <coughs> excuse me, you do need a margin account. That's something you can ask the broker about. But anyways, we bought a put. So when I do options, I'm buying puts or I'm buying calls. Anyways, that was a nice one in there. <coughs> so how do I make the decisions for those trades, like the Mew and the Spy? I have a rating system. It's a checklist. I go through it in the morning. It's 26 points. I don't need 26 points to do it. I need 20 points or more to do it in the direction of the gap. So if I rate it as a bullish gap and it rates 20 or more, I'll go long. If I rate it as a bearish gap and it rates 20 or more, then I short it. 
Now, if it's a pricey thing, I may do an option instead of a day trade, like something like the Tesla, but I might, in reference to something like the SPY, maybe I'll day trade it and I'll do an option. We did uh, Apple as a day trade yesterday and we did a put. So sometimes I'll do both and when I do both in that same stock, then it's really, really good. This was again. Hey, this. Melissa, oh, go ahead. excuse me. I just, um, we have several people that are chiming in saying that the display has only been showing the QQQ. Um, I just wanted to just double check to make sure which screen that you're sharing there. Oh, I had, oh shoot. I didn't switch it over to the, to the, I don't know how to do that then. I guess I can't go back and forth. Shoot. Uh, yeah, you should be able to switch between screens. Like I had the cues up as my charts. How do I switch it then? I guess I can. Uh, let's see if you, is, do you have a, a separate monitor with the, another screen on it? No, I have right now, I just put back my charts to see I have the cues up, but for the last 15 minutes, I had my PowerPoint up because no one see it. No one could see the PowerPoint. What, 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 I mean, what I'm looking at right now is I, I see a six, I see a six panel grid. Um, but some people are saying here, the display has only been showing the QQQs. All right, uh, there's let no me, PowerPoint showing here. I just, I just, let me, let me share the screen again. I guess I can't go back and forth. It's not going to let me then because I, I thought I could do that. There, now, okay, now, so, you'll, see the, now you'll see the slide. I'll, I'll go back and show the trades I just showed. I wish I'd known that in the last day. Oh, no, it's no problem because I was seeing something different there. That's okay. These things happen, everybody. We're, we're cool. <laughs> Okay, well, we're we're yeah. flowing, but you were on such a roll, uh, and it was just hard to follow you there. <laughs> that's okay. Well, let me go over. Let me just go back to, I'll just explain again here, this Mew train. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, I won't be able to flip back and forth. I thought I could automatically do it without resetting it. Maybe I have to go off, on, off, on, and I didn't I didn't know that. I apologize. Yeah, in other words, if you, I think if you go ahead and press the share screen button uh, again when you've got it there, then you could switch to the other screen, and then you can go back and forth. Okay. All right, well, thanks for telling me. Um, no, no problem. Thank you, people, for bringing this to our attention because I, I was seeing the same thing. But anyway, Melissa, sorry to derail you there for a moment. Okay. Take a quick pause and keep going because this is great stuff. Well, I think what I said made sense even without seeing anything, but <laughs> it did. We were visualizing. So, okay, very good. Well, let's visualize the gap here in the MU. So the MU trade, what is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. The stock closed up here this day at four o'clock around $50 and change. Boom. Open in the morning here at around 49 and fell. We shorted it. So anyways, this was a day trade. And again, the date was 930. Entry was 48.92, stock was 49.55, 5,000 shares with a risk of 31.50, exit was 48.10. So the profit was 4,100. This was a trade that I called in the live trading room, okay, that you could have done with me. Now, this continued. So here is the bar where it went. This was a gap down. So I rated it using my 26 point rating system very early in the morning. I could do it at six o'clock in the morning. I just double check it. And I say, is this going to work or not? And I say, yes, it rains over 20 points for my system. Then I wait for the setup and it worked. And this continued down more than a dollar from where I exited it. But I like to trade in the morning and be done. You could have done puts in this too, actually. Or you could have done it as a put or you could have done it as an equity trade like I just showed you there. So this was a gap down. This was a gap up. I was talking about this too. <laughs> we didn't do this, but this is a bullish gap. Stock closed here at 46. Open in the morning here above 48, rally. You could have gone long this. Now, not every gap down is a short and not every gap up is a long, okay? That is why the checklist, the rating system tells me. Because again, I'm looking for institutional money. Who is buying? Who is selling? I want to be on the side of that power money when I'm trading. That's how you get a move like this. And it's a beautiful, beautiful move. Anyways, I was, I was trying to show you the options trade here in the SPY. September 23rd, in the afternoon around lunch, I called the 327 puts that expired literally on that Friday. This was Wednesday late. I saw we were going to go, and we did. This was a great price for the SPY puts, but it was tight. It was only Wednesday to Friday, 240 for one. Okay, so beginner risk, you could have taken 10 contracts, risk 2400 sold at 560 made $3,200. 
and advanced risk, who could have bought 30. 7,200 risk sold for 9,600. Again, the risk is fixed. So meaning you can't lose any more than this. And the train was expired on the Friday, but it went before then. So here was this chart. This is what I was showing you. Here was the big sell-off. Then it gapped down the next day. So you could have got out of it here, or you could have got out of it in the morning the next day. This was a put. What is a put? When I buy puts or buy calls, when I'm buying a put, I'm predicting the stock is move, going to move lower. When I'm buying a call, I'm predicting that it's going to move higher. Okay, so it's just a different way to do gaps. I do do both. Now, let's talk about Apple. This is where we were. Same day I called Apple. I called it in the morning before the SPY. This was the 110 puts. Gosh, these were so cheap. But again, it was Wednesday to Friday. So it's 23rd expired on the Friday. Cost was $1.40. 60 contracts, $8,400 risk. Sold for 375 Beautiful Tree. Profit, 14,100. 168% return investment. Normally, I'm looking for 50 to 100% on an option. 100% is great. If I can get more than 100%, fabulous. In this case here, it just kept going. I say, let it play out. Um, if you did a intermediate trader risk, 2100, you could have made 3525. So let's look at this chart here, the 23rd Apple. Here was the day, and then it went boom, and gap down, boom. So again, we did the 110 puts, fell, 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 continued down the next day in the morning, you could have got out, or you could have got out here, whichever. Profitable trade. Nice sell-off, we captured the move. And again, this was a gap down. So the stock closed here, gap down, fell. Closed at one price of four, opened in the morning lower, boom. Okay, so that was an options trade. But again, based on the gap, here's a bullish gap in Apple. Feels like a long time ago. This was August, August, August 3rd. Stock closed here, gapped up, could have bought it, rallied. Okay, I think this was earnings, I forget. Anyways, then we did another one. Amazon is one of those ones that I, uh, that I always do as an option because it's just so expensive and it's even expensive as options. One contract costs $19, you think it's a lot, but actually um, it, can, it can really go. I mean, sometimes this can go over up to 100 in the 200s. I mean, so you could pay $40, $50 for a contract here and still make money. So we did the 3,000 puts in Amazon 163% return on investment. If you were 7,600, you made 12.4. Again, same day. You see how these are all the same point. Uh, again, sometimes I'll call trades in a bucket where on the same day, boom, 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 well, I'll see there, that we're, it's all gonna go. It's all gonna go in one direction. The market's gonna drag it down or the market maybe will rally. And then we'll, we'll do calls and we'll do longs. Anyways, here is the sell off here. Boom, dropped. Oh, closed here, gap down, fell. Got down a little bit the next day, fell through the strike. We did it beforehand, boom. Nice one here, again, big fat bar. Again, this is selling. So you would do a put like we did or you would short it, okay? And again, this these are sent out in email format for the options trades. The day trades I call live in the room. The options trades are sent out to an email to you to do in live time, which could happen pre-market, which you don't do it till after the market opens or you could do them anytime during the day. Um, I may call them at, at any point during the day when something happens. Uh, but the again, the benefit of coming to me is you're going to get my expertise and number one learning the system, but getting these types of trades to see them because timing is extremely important, not just for day trades, but timing is important for options too. And I would say I would say it's equal. Um, and when you're in a day trade, timing is important because you got to get it and it has to go and move before four o'clock. The market closes at four. And, and timing for options is important. Why? Because there's time associated with every options contract. It's got to move before that time is up. And funnily enough, sometimes the ones that I do, sometimes they do go the last day. That's not ideal. I usually like them to go before the last day, 24 to 48 hours. But sometimes they do even go um, the very, very last day. So in reference to, again, my whole process is getting up in the morning, raining the gap, going through the checklist, determining if it's on my watch list, if I'm gonna wait till the setup occurs, okay? I make good choices by following my system and not deviating from it. If the gap doesn't rate good, I don't do it. If there isn't any good gaps, I don't trade at all because you've gotta pick the right pick. You've gotta pick something that's gonna A, move, and B, go in your direction in a way that's predictable. Nine times out of 10, most stocks go with the market on any given day. 
That's true. Even things that are an opposite trend. So you've got to be able to decide when you're making quality choices about trades, is this gonna go regardless of the market? Because sometimes the market's hard to read, even though even I don't get it right all the time, although I get it right a lot. Sometimes you just say, I gotta do this, I wanna make money, I wanna get it out of it, like we shorted Apple yesterday. That went before the market, before the market went, before the market sold off, Apple went yesterday. And again, to be honest with you, I couldn't even tell you the reason. I, I don't even know. I just looked at the gap, I rated the gap, I went through my process, I went through my checklist. Now here was the QQQs. This was a day trade. This was on that same day when we fell off a planet um, on the 23rd. This was a day trade and this was one you could have held all day. It was never gonna back up. It went to the dream target, it surpassed all targets. Again, one that just, when selling comes in and pushes something down, when people sell, 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 again, the concept of panic, think of this, think of the concept of panic in your head. What's going on? Remember, training, people trade with emotions. I, I always find it interesting that uh, people always say, well, you have to be disciplined and you can't trade with any emotions. That's ridiculous. You're a human being, you have emotions. Try as you may to say that you're gonna trade without emotions. You will fail at every turn. You are a human being and as a result, you have emotions. I use my emotions to benefit me to one, make money in the market and two, make choices. I use the system, but my emotions give me the conviction to hold something, to take something, or to get out of something as well. If you're trying to live a life and trade and be profitable, and pretend that you don't have any emotions as a human being, then you may as well just pack it in because you're not gonna be able to do it. And whenever people lecture and say that, I think it's absolutely crazy. They don't understand how the human body works and how the brain works. You have emotions, embrace it, embrace it. You will do a lot better doing that. And if you lose and have a bad day, get angry, be upset that day, and get up the next morning and have amnesia. I mean, there's days when I don't have good days and I'm frustrated and I'm mad, and then maybe the next day I take a day off. But you gotta get over it, and you get back on the horse and you do what you know you need to do and then you move forward. Anyways, this was a beautiful trade and I did hold this because I knew it was gonna work. Anyways, this closed here, this gap down, this fell off the planet. Again, this was after the rally, came in here, bounced, people bought it, boom, sold off. 100% retracement here. We did this as a day trade, 271.50, we shorted it. Stop was 272.55, this was a beautiful stop for this. A little bit more than a buck for the, for the market. It was just a great stop. Exit was 263.80, profit $19,250 as a day trade. Now you would have needed margin to do this. Okay, this is kind of pricey. If you did a smaller size, 250, 250 shares, the risk was $262 and you still could have made almost $2,000. Why? Taking the trade with a proper entry, good stop, and then obviously letting it play out to get the momentum of the move. This was just a a great day all around to be trading with me, uh, similar to yesterday, because I just had it on point and very, very early, and also saw that it was it was going to play out. Now this is what we did yesterday, and this was this continued. Like I said, it ended up going. I forget what the low of yesterday was, but this was we got out of this before the Trump tweet, and it went down, broke one twelve fifty. I don't even know what the low was, but it was crazy, crazy what this did. We shorted Apple. We shorted Apple, 115.15, stop was 116.25. Shares was 2,500, risk was 27.50. Uh, we did an ad, so sometimes I'll do this, it happened to be the same price. Total shares 5,000, exit 113.70, a beautiful move. A beautiful move. A buck is good, two bucks is great, but we did an ad in this, so this was a heavy position for this stock. $7,250, and again, this was at one point during the day yesterday, I clipped it, stuck it in here, but this fell, and fell very, very hard yesterday. I'd go back and go back to the, the charts, but I don't wanna do that right now, because I don't wanna lose these slides. But anyways, Apple tanked later yesterday, in the afternoon, after all the, the hubbub then about the stimulus. Now, if you wanted to take, again, small size, you can trade my system with small size, big size, whatever size you can afford. It depends on the size of your account. And again, I think you should take position sizes based on your familiarity with my system, based on how long you've been trading with me, uh, based on your own, again, emotions. Are you a risk taker? Are you someone that is more conservative? Um, sometimes more conservative people like to do the options. They just feel better about them. Sometimes the day trades set up kind of fast and they move kind of fast. People. 
people I think, you know, if you're a little conservative, maybe you like the options better. You know, you don't have to put in a stop. Uh, you can put the order out ahead of time. You can just set it. If it costs a dollar, put an order out to sell you it to. You don't have to sit there and babysit it all day. And if it hits, it hits. If it doesn't, it doesn't, you know? I mean, you don't have to sit and babysit options. Now, with day trades, I would be babysitting them. I'd be in the room in the morning between 9.30 and 10, 10.30, and I would be watching, watching what's going on. Anyways, you could have made $725 in the Apple yesterday with only 250 shares. Nice trade. That was, a, that was a nice call. Anyways, it's the checklist. This is how I do it. It's how I'm making all the picks, how I'm reading the market. And actually, once I'm through all this PowerPoint, I'll take it off and on. We'll go to the charts and I'll answer any questions at the end, Raleigh. Um, but I am looking at the large institutional money. I That's where I have the niche. One, it's gaps. Two, I'm predicting where the gap is going to take it. Where is it going to take it? Is it going to push it down? Is it going to get bought? Okay, it's called a professional gap. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap. How do you know which way to do it? Again, because not every gap up, it moves higher, and not every gap down, it moves lower. Okay, so I have to have the confirmation. For me, the confirmation is the rating system. And so that's what I'm, what I'm looking at. And again, it's always in that pre-market period. So my system, if you want to come and learn from me, tells you how, what, and when, okay? How to do it, you learn the rating system. It's 20 points or more. You learn those points in the class. You learn the setups, how to figure out the targets. You learn the entries. And then obviously the benefit is that I'm calling them live in the room as well. So the sky's the limit for how much money you want to make trading. You have to look at your own finances, which you can afford to take per trade. I say give yourself at least two trades a day, maybe three. One is not enough, okay? Sometimes we do something called a retake, where I do it once, if I take a stop, I'll do it again, I'll hit it again. So you gotta give yourself more than one trade a day. <clears throat> but if you wanna, if your goal, okay, is to work for yourself, and you wanna make, you know, over 100 grand a year, over 200 grand a year, you have to risk, at least I'd say, 500 if you want to be around that 75k mark a year and i'd say a thousand to 1500 if you want to be at the 20 grand a month over 200 grand a year so that just kind of gives you an idea how much now if you can afford to risk 2500 dollars a trade obviously you're gonna you're gonna make much more but really then you'd have to be able to give yourself like five grand a day to play with then to take at least two trades a day okay because again i would not limit yourself to one trade a day uh, and this is something that you can grow over time. So we're getting into the end of the period of the year of 2020. There's still three more months left in the year. I anticipate them to be good trading trading uh, days. I think October, I called September to be bearish. I was right. October, I'm not saying it's going to be bearish. I'm saying October is going to be choppy and volatile. What does that mean? It means it's going to be sideways or possibly sell off, but we might look like we're moving higher and then not go anywhere. What is volatility? Volatility is you think something's going in one direction and then it goes in the complete opposite direction. That's what volatility is. That's one of the benefits as well of doing options because an option is like a balloon where the volatility, you could be down in something and then the balloon gets blown up and then you're up a lot. Or you take a trade and the balloon is immediately blown up and then you're up a lot. So where the bias is looking in one direction then all of a sudden the air comes into the balloon, which is the volatility in an option, for example, and then it goes and it's up a lot of money, okay? And sometimes that happens also in the gap where you could be in something and it goes in your favor overnight. And those are great days. Those are fabulous days. But I would just, a couple tips here. Have a plan of action. Have a good system. If you have a good mentor to follow, someone like me, I would do it. Take quality entries. Don't ever trade. And don't be a piggy about targets, okay? We obviously, everyone wants to have huge trades. I was not a piggy in Apple yesterday. That was a good decision. I didn't know that Trump was going to tweet and it would go down to 112 something. I could have been a piggy and made way more, but I mean, come on, that was a great call. So the idea of not being a pig about even good trades, I think is important because don't forget, October is going to be volatile. You could be up a lot in something and then it can quickly reverse against you. So you got to be aware of that. Part of trading is what? Chunking it out. You have to book money. This isn't like, this isn't long-term investing, what we're doing here. This is going into a trade, making the money and booking it. You 
make it, book it, make it, book it, make it, book it. Okay, this is, no one here is Warren Buffett. You can't take a position in something and hold it forever. Like the idea is to actually make money and you can't forget that. It's not just taking the trade, it's, 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 it's exiting the trade, okay? <laughs> it's like the Seinfeld episode. You know how to take the reservation, you don't know how to hold the reservation. <laughs> okay, this is the part of the piece of the puzzle, all right? Anyways, what helps with successful profits in the system? Money management. You've got to use shops. I teach that in the class. You've got to take it seriously as a business, okay? And, and you have to have more winners than losers. And, and if you do, you can be successful. I find a lot of people just have no system and, or they have a system that doesn't work. And that's really what it comes down to. And if you have a good strategy and a good system, you're going to make money. Even if you make mistakes on money management, or exits at times, you overall should make money if you have a good system. Um, unless you just have the worst money management I've ever seen and like risk your whole account in one trade, which, you know, I know people can do crazy things like that if they have small accounts, but no one should ever, ever do that. <clears throat> you have to look at it as something where every day you have a singular goal and then week per month per year. And that's, and that's how I would do it. Now, as far as options and day trades, I look at one is return on investment and one is uh, risk to reward. I'm looking for one over for both, <coughs> excuse me, but I try to, I try to give options a chance to play out, okay? If I'm up against the time, like it's the day before the expiration and I'm up 53%, am I gonna hold that into the last day to make 100%? No, I'm gonna get out, okay? So again, it depends how quick something moves in the time since I take it. And as far as day trades, I'm trying to get out of all my trades early in the morning and just get out of quickly. But for me, the edge and the niche is in the 26 points. I read the gap in the pre-market, that's how I'm making the decisions, that's how I'm making the prediction, and then I wait to take the setup after it opens. <coughs> but for me, it's the trade selection. It's just, you know, looking at something and saying, this is gonna go here before it does not and that is a skill set. It is something that people can learn. I know that because I've taught people and they've learned it from me. Now, while I'm better than anybody that I've ever taught because I created the system, I've been doing this longer than anyone, uh, that is the benefit, again, of getting my expertise daily to read the market and see things when they're difficult, when they're hard, when they're challenging, when it's confusing, okay? But I follow that checklist. I don't skip the process even though I have it all in my head. I know, I see what the money's going. I go through the checklist. I don't skip it. I don't trade on the fly. You have to be disciplined in that sense to do it. Um, and I think if you can, then you can be successful. So number one, again, just to review here before we close it out, you need a strategy. For me, it's gaps. You have to have a specific reason for doing the trade. For me, it's the criteria. It's the checklist and I follow the rules. If the gap doesn't rate 20 points, then I don't do it at all. You need an entry point, okay, and a stop, and then you need an exit, even after you decide what you're picking, okay? So say you like it, you're rating it, you also need to know where to enter and where to exit. And as I've discussed in reference to options, that's critical with the timing, but it still is with day trades too, because again, you, you have to get in and you have to get out before four. You also should have goals. Be realistic about those goals. You can pump them up later once you know what you're doing and making money. Most people are not used to making money five days a week, so once you get in a groove doing that, then you can increase your goals. <clears throat> I would say be realistic and normal at the beginning, and then you can like change it every earning season. There's four quarterly earning seasons a year. We're starting the first one next week. It's a good time to come and trade with me because of that, but for me, it's the system Sticking with one thing, you can make money doing this. Your share size is a function of that. I'm very deliberate in my choices. I never I never sugarcoat it. I never say, well, maybe. No, I say I have 100% conviction or I have no conviction. Market's either high or market's lower. Stock's gonna sell off or it's gonna rally. I'm never on the fence and I don't flip it around. So, you know, anyways, as far as coming to me, if you wanna learn my system, you will come and learn it in a class. Um, if you want to join the options newsletter, there's no prerequisites. You can sign up for the year. If you want to be in the trading room, you have to do the class because the trade's set up fast and you must know the system before you trade in the live room with me. Um, and if anyone has any questions, they can certainly reach out to me. They can email me. I trade only gaps that rate per my system. 
I'm looking for good risk reward trains. And again, the money management, you can ask me about after the class. If you want a referral to a broker, you can ask me too. But there's many, many brokers out there. I don't have an affiliation with anyone. There's so many places to trade now. <coughs> you can open up a prop account with less than $2,500. You can open up an options account with $2,000. And I, I was talking about Robinhood. There's so many places now. Don't limit yourself and say, I can't do this because I don't have 100 grand. I can't do this because I don't have 50 grand. That's not true. While you may wish that you had that kind of money and wish you could risk 8,000 and make 14 grand, I get it. I get it. The fact is that take what you got and go from there and keep a positive attitude and keep moving forward. Again, the situation the world is in this year with everybody, it's very easy to become depressed don't don't go there you are in charge of what you're thinking in your head and again you are in charge of your emotions for me i allow the system to guide me in the right direction again it's the meat and potatoes of what i do if you came and learned from me so it's the 26 points that's everything that i do that's the system it's only gaps and really quickly here i'm doing a fall special which i had planned before this this webinar this week so it's good timing it's only through Friday, though. Today is Wednesday, so you'd have to sign up for the class on October 24th and 25th by Friday, October 9th. If you want to, it's a two-day class, 9 to 5. Class tuition is $69.99, U.S. dollars, 7 grand. You get the year free in the trading room and the options net newsletter for one year free with the class. The normal class price is 7 grand, okay? If you want to sign up for the class, you'd learn the class and get all my trades for one year. This is a great deal. I'm only running it though until Friday. So let, really quickly here, let me click on and click off and go to, and there's my email. If anyone wants to email me, melissathestockswish.com. I will go to my charts and then I will answer any questions here. Sure, uh, and Melissa, while, while you're doing that, I've been monitoring the questions that have been coming in. And, and, and one of the ones that came up earlier is that, um, is do you have like a favorite like basket of stocks that you like to follow or are you using some kind of a scanning technique to spot you know uh gaps in the market for you to begin your process on your 26 point checklist um i don't have a bucket of stocks that i look at no i mean i find if i see the market's going to go in a certain direction then i may trade a several market stocks with the market direction but I don't have a bucket. I don't do the same things every day. I look at different okay. things. You can get gaps from anywhere. If you want to get a scanner, get a scanner. If you don't want to pay for a scanner, you can get stuff free literally everywhere. Yahoo Finance. I mean, there's so many places that you can find gap lists that you don't have to pay for a scanner. For a while, I did pay for a scanner, and I felt it was a waste of money and overlap. Because you could even you could even turn on Fox Business and see what's gapping in the morning on CNBC. So I just mm -hmm. find like it's overlapped to pay for a scanner. But if you want to, you could. OK, uh, another question uh, that came in, because when you were talking specifically that point about, hey, there's certain things that you need to be able to to, to risk on a trade. In other words, you need to be able to be comfortable risking a thousand if you want to make seventy five thousand dollars a year or risk two thousand. And it prompted the question from many people about what account size would I have to have to be able to 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 have that kind of a risk or to make that kind of money. And I know you said, hey, you know, take what you got. But is there is there something there that you recommend as a minimum or is it does it really depend? Well, just common sense. If you open up a proprietary data trading account with five thousand dollars, say, for example, they're going to give you 10 to one buying power. Probably you're going to have 50,000 in margin. If you have a five thousand dollars cash in your account, even if your margin's 50,000, you shouldn't be risking a thousand dollars a trade. That's 20 percent of your cash account. If you have a five thousand uh -huh. dollar account, I wouldn't risk any more than five hundred dollars a trade. And even that's a lot. I start out with 150, 200, 250. And if you're doing well, you can build a five thousand dollar account up to 10 and so on and so forth. So at this point in time, so for once again, for people that tend to look at this, they, in their mind, they're going like, gosh, I got to have $25,000 to be a pattern day trader or whatnot. That doesn't apply here specifically and particularly if you're trading options. Well, Is that options, correct? you don't have to have, you don't have, there's a gentleman that's been on my options newsletter. He started out with a small account. He's built it up. He's got 20 grand in there. He's close to the 25. He's going to get there just doing the options trades. And he started out with less than $5,000 and he's been with me for three months. So it's possible. The reality is that if you're doing options, you, and if you're not gonna have a margin account, if you don't have it set up that way, you are limited to get in and out. For example, if I had called 
something and it and it moved on the day you can't get out of it that day you have to wait to the next day or, or you're cut off a certain number of trades you can take a day it's better sure. to have a pattern day trading account to day trade uh to day trade for all of it options and day trades but if you're just doing the equity trades you can go to something called a proprietary day trading place you can google it you can look it up there's a million out there if you want a referral you can ask me they don't require um any more than 2500 and you could pattern day trade now again it's a different type of firm it's not the same as like an ameritrade or or a place like that where you need the 25,000 and even places like that they'll give you um they will they will give you a, a warning like a flag if you if you say you do an option and you end up getting in and out of it and you've got say you got 15 grand or something they'll they'll flag you and give you like a warning so it's not like you couldn't like say if you had done apple yesterday and you were up in it and you wanted to get out you they wouldn't close you out if you did that you would get a little warning mr smith you shouldn't have done that and like they usually give you two or three warnings before they would close you out i would try to sure. make it your goal to try to get up to the twenty-five thousand, so you could be more nimble in and out but again if you're doing day trades with me and options with me even if you need two separate accounts or two separate places to do it you should be able right. to work it up to get to that point you know just by following the trades i'd say at least realistically between now and the end of the year because again it's earnings season next week we're gonna have tons of trades to do and if i call 20 trades in a day and if i call 20 options which sometimes i do if i see everything's gonna go and you can't do them all don't don't sweat a bullet do the ones you can do one do two sure a couple of other questions real quickly because we're coming up against time melissa that you could work into the tail end here mm -hmm. uh one was that there were several questions we're asking you know what kind of uh, you know the lines that what kind of moving averages are using there and the other one was um you know you talked about a strategy that you that, that you that you have what's your in what's the indicator that you use to try to measure gaps price candles if i looked at candlesticks if i take everything off here it wouldn't matter. Um, let me just quickly see if I can take everything off here really quickly just to show you. I'm going to take off all my moving averages and show you I could trade without them. I'm probably one of very few people that could do that. I could tell you what's going to happen here to Boeing. Look at that. Okay. This is that. This is it. This is called price, people. This is what it is. I could trade the T without even looking at this, knowing the numbers. Now, that's something that's very, very, very unusual. Again, it's a niche. I'm reading okay. the selling. I'm reading the buying. Don't live and die by those moving averages, it will crush you. And most people also have like 7,000 things on their charts, Fibonacci's and everything else. It's junk. It gives me a headache when I see that. This is much cleaner, even here, look at this. But I've, I've been trading for years with those lines on, but I don't make decisions based off of those. I look at the gap, it's the price action in the gap. You could tell when something gaps or not, even if I didn't even see a chart. Lots of times if I'm off, like when I used to go to Fox when we were we were in person, which we're probably never gonna be again, when I used to be in there, I'd have on my phone, I'd have to talk about something. I didn't have a chart in front of me. I could see where the market was. I knew where the market was and I could tell then if we were gapping based on the price. Focus on the price. Get crap off your charts if you're not using them. If you don't even know what it is <laughs> and you can't even explain it to a bum in the street, then take it off because it's hurting you. It's actually hurting you actually. <laughs> So, so along those lines, once again, the question was, what's the index that you use for gazing? I think you said price. you really start the day by looking at the spy, right? Oh, the spy. Yeah, the spy. I, I like to look at the. I like to look at the the spy. Yeah. Because that's kind of like a market indicator for you, and then based on that, you start your checklist process. If I understand that. Yes, correctly. and look here, we're not going anywhere. We're not. Going, we're probably. We're either, we're either going to do one or two things today. Hold not go anywhere and not go over the high from yesterday or drop or hold and wait till the, the data that comes out tomorrow morning because don't forget the unemployment claims are coming out tomorrow morning a stimulus hasn't been made if you get up in the morning in the next 24 hours and they have not if nancy pelosi and trump haven't come to come to a jesus moment then the numbers are bad tomorrow i would not be surprised if we sold off tomorrow i wouldn't be surprised at all sure so absolute last question for me is what indicator do you use to determine what Trump is going to tweet next? <laughs> I, I, I tell you, I, I like honest to God, like even I, when I saw that sell off yesterday, I was like, holy cow. I mean, sometimes I surprise myself. But again, I've been doing this a long time. See, that's the other thing. I'll say this really quick and let everybody go because I, I, I got to go. But the thing is, when you jump around and do too many things, you never get good at anything. I'm so good at what I do that sometimes I'm just intuitively good. 
I'm just intuitively can tell you. Like I just told you something right there. What I just said two minutes ago about tomorrow. Think about that. Remember that. I, I'm, right. I'm, it's just, it's kind of, it's just when you get to that point, when you know something so well, it, it is intuitive. And that's where I am because I've done nothing but this now for 12 and a half years. Do you understand? That's the difference. Absolutely. Well, Melissa, once again, thank you so much for your time today. I know that you're extremely busy and we value your time and your presentation. And folks, just another reason why we were delighted to have Melissa with us here today for our Women in Wealth. She is just one of 15 examples of women that are successful in this business. And we're going to share with you over the course of these two days of the things that they do. So once again, thank you so much, Melissa, for your time today. Have a great day, trading day. And I am going to pay attention to what happens tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for having me. All right, folks.